One of the oldest scuffles in manga scholarship has to do with influence. Is contemporary manga a natural evolution of traditional Japanese art, or is it inspired by Western cartoons and strips? The answer, it probably won't surprise you if you followed me for any length of time, is more complicated than any either or would let you believe. I'm Andre Gilroy, and this is Comics Crash Course. As I alluded to way back when, when I was talking about the broad history of comics, East Asia in general, and Japan in particular, has a long history of narrative, sequential, visual art. When tracing this history in a Japanese context, most historians start with emakimono. Emakimono are a form of hand scroll. Now, scholars believe the hand scroll format was invented in India around 400 BCE. Uh, hand scrolls made their way to China around 100 BCE, where new styles and genres were developed, including painted illustrations. In fact, many scrolls became all paintings. The earliest surviving Japanese hand scroll is a Buddhist text featuring paintings dating from around 800, leading scholars to believe that the hand scroll came from mainland China to Japan somewhere around 700, along with Buddhism and the writing system kanji, which we discussed in the last episode. Unlike many hand scrolls, which tended toward being primarily text or primarily paintings, emakimono had a tendency to combine separate sections of text and image into a scroll novel. In order to read these, the reader would unroll one arm's length at a time and re-roll the scroll in the correct order when they were through. The most famous imakimono is the Genji Monogatari Imaki. Created in 1130, it's an adaptation of Murasaki Shikibu's novel, The Tale of Genji. Challenging Genji for the most famous imakimono and probably more important to the history of manga, are the Choju Jinbutsu Giga, or the Frolicking Animal Scrolls, a set of four scrolls that feature cartoony, anthropomorphic animals playing out satirical recreations of Buddhist ceremonies and everyday life. Now, these picture-only scrolls were created somewhere between the 12th and 13th centuries and are traditionally attributed to a monk by the name of Toba Sojo, though most historians now believe there are probably several artists involved. However, that traditional attribution is why the cartoony, playful painting style in the scrolls, and at some stages, even cartoons themselves, came to be called Toba A. And these are definitely cartoons. They're simplified drawings, exaggerated for effect. And for that reason, it's not uncommon for manga historians to point to the Choju Giga, sometimes shortened, as the first manga, or at least the origins of manga. But one of the things that separates emakimono from its eventual manga descendants is that emakimono, like either the Genji emaki or the Choju Giga, are that emakimono are always one-of-a-kind works of art, singular objects. This changes in the 17th century, when a growing merchant class, one that was restricted access to certain kinds of luxuries in order to maintain the strict class hierarchies of medieval Japan, began to demand affordable art. And affordability could be achieved with reproducibility. And this is where woodblock printing comes in. Now, the most basic forms of woodblock printing occur when an artist chisels out a design in a woodblock, ink is then applied to that design on the woodblock, and then paper applied to the inked block. Now, as artisans become more sophisticated, they can make multi-layered designs using multiple blocks and multiple ink colors. The result is labor-intensive and complex, but still reproducible. The most famous form of woodblock prints in Japan are of a genre called ukiyo-e, which translates to pictures of the floating world. Very poetic sounding, but actually quite down to earth. These images combined the sort of traditions and aesthetics of Japanese art, which tended to be concerned mostly with religious or courtly life, and the stuff of everyday life for the middle and even lower classes. Things like folk tales, landscapes, actors, sumo wrestlers, travel scenes, body humor, and, well, even pornography. And it's from ukiyo-e that manga is, well, literally born. The word itself. Katsushika Hokusai, probably the most famous ukiyo-e printmaker. I promise you, you know his stuff. 
coined the term manga to refer to a publication that was essentially his sketches created as block prints and then collected in volumes. I mentioned briefly in the last video that manga meant whimsical images in its kanji, but Hokusai defined manga as the brush gone wild. He published 15 volumes of these manga between 1814 and 1878, and they were immensely popular, not only in Japan, but eventually worldwide, circulating to the US and Europe after Commodore Perry's entry into the Japan in 1854. More on Perry in a minute. The late 18th and early 19th century also saw the rise of kusazoshi, woodblock printed booklets, and these were usually printed in 10 page volumes. Now, genres of kusazoshi were indicated by the color of the cover, and most relevant for our purposes were the yellow books, or kibyoshi. Now, kibyoshi were generally social satire and gossip, and for some reason, uh, kibyoshi seemed to feature more illustration than many of the other genres. Woodblock printing allows and even encourages artists to let words and images intermingle, and the result was pretty stunning. Kibyoshi were something really unique and really beautiful, images and words mixed together in a fascinating and really unique way. Kibyoshi became very, very popular around the 1770s, and they could be really complex social satire criticizing local government or more general humor, usually a bit of both. However, despite the popularity of the genre, or really because of it, strict censorship laws put a complete end to the publications around 1806. Now back to Perry. The military dictatorship in Japan had largely closed the country off to Western trade and cultural influence for hundreds of years. Not completely, but almost completely. In 1854, however, US Commodore Matthew Perry literally landed his ship on Japanese shores, and the era of isolationism was essentially over. Now, with Western folks came Western comics. Brit Charles Wordman began publishing Japan Punch, an English-style satirical magazine in 1862, and in 1887, Georges Bigot published his French-style journal, Tobae. The political critiques in there got him in trouble more than once. Now, inspired by these European-style satire and humor magazines, if you want to know more about those, follow the video link. Japanese artists began creating their own European-style satire and humor magazines, too, most notably Marumaru Chinbun, which was founded in 18. 77. And it's in this setting that the two founders of modern manga rise up, Rakuten Kitazawa and Ipe Okamoto. In 1901, Rakuten Kitazawa begins drawing comics for the journal Jiji Shinpo, claiming to be inspired by the work of newspaper cartoonists like Richard Olcott, Rudolf Dirks, and Frederick Burr Opper. By 1905, he founds his own journal, Tokyo Puck, a satire magazine with a deliberately international focus, publishing stories in English, Japanese, and Chinese. And in 1918, he founds an association of Japanese illustrators. But then by 1929, he had written a series of books outlining his experiences traveling through the United States. And on his return, founds an art school. Kitazawa's work is often cited as the beginning of modern manga traditions, including his use of panels and particularly Western style cartooning. But as you can see through some of these examples I'm showing you, his own style is equally influenced by Western cartooning styles and traditional Japanese aesthetics, and I think saying that he is either one or the other really ignores the whole of his revoir. Then there's Ippe Okamoto. Okamoto created cartoons for the Asahi Shimbun newspaper and is known for bringing many American comics to Japanese newspapers. In fact, some like Mutt and Jeff and Bringing Up Father would become huge hits. Okamoto was a bit of a Renaissance man, he was also a trained painter and a novelist and accompanied Einstein across Japan on a lecture tour. <laughs> he brought this intensity to his interest in comics, including writing a very early treatise on manga called Shin Manga no Kakikata, uh, How to Draw the New Manga. And in it, even from these really early days, he began theorizing the differences between Western style cartoons, Japanese art, and the new manga, placing the new manga somewhere in between, though shifting it slightly more toward Western cartooning. And that, for today, will bring us to the end, and to the edge of what I would call contemporary manga practices. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, many scholars want to theorize manga as the product of either Western influence or a traditional Japanese aesthetic, but it seems clear, especially looking at the work of Okamoto and Kitazawa, 
Well, it's about both of them. Even as they try to westernize, their own roots in Japanese aesthetics and Japanese culture are undeniable. Next week, we jump from the fathers of manga to its god. See you then.